So this first DIY is so awesome, you guys. My friend Nikki showed this to me a couple years ago when we were in high school, and I was like blown away. I thought this was such a cool idea. It is your own personalized little like vintage journal, and to me, this looks like something you could get at like Urban Outfitters or something, but it's way, way cheaper, and it's so much fun to make, so just stay tuned, you guys. So you're going to need a piece of cardboard. You can get it off the back of like a notebook, some Mod Podge. Um, this is optional, but if you have any cool stencil designs, definitely grab those. You're going to want some paper bags, pages from an old book, a large paintbrush, a smaller paintbrush, and any type of decorative pen or marker of your choice. I got these from Walmart. And then I also have this metallic -y luster paint stuff that I got from Michaels. And the cool part about this project is you can basically do whatever you want to decorate it. You can do it however you want. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. You're going to start by folding your piece of cardboard into a book shape. So you want to leave about an inch um, like I'm doing here. So that can be like, you know, where you put the pages in, like the binding of a book. So you want to fold it into a front and a back and then just trim it down to the desired size. And then start ripping apart the paper bags that you have. And then you're going to use the Mod Podge and your big brush and glue the crumpled pieces of bag onto the front of your book. And you're going to do it on the back too and just do it however you want. This is the most fun part in my opinion, even though it's kind of repetitive. Maybe that's why I like it. Um, I'm a freak, but yeah. So you just put them on there however you want. It really doesn't matter. And then once you've got that covered, you're going to take more of the Mod Podge and with the little soft brush, just cover the entire cover with it. And then you're going to let it dry and then move to the back and do the same thing. And I just let that sit and dry for a couple of hours. And now that it's dry, it should look like this. The next step is grab some old book pages and if you want you can paint on them with gesso or acrylic paint. I have already done that. Then you're going to take the scissors and poke a hole through the top and bottom of the back cover and just be careful. And then line up all the pages inside of the book and poke a hole through the top and bottom of those. And then I just used the end of a paintbrush to kind of open up the hole because we're going to be threading twine through it later and then bind the pages into the book and just tie a knot on the back cover and I just left a lot of extra twine length hanging off so that I could wrap it through the pages of the book and use it as a bookmark. Isn't that just so cool? I love it! And now it's time to decorate the outside. So like I said, part is completely up to you. You can do it however you want. I was just kind of experimenting because I already have a book like this. I made one with my friend Nikki a long time ago. So this was just me kind of experimenting, trying new things. And I tried some different stencil stuff and I drew on it. And you know, you can literally do whatever the frick you want. <laughs> and um, when I was at Urban Outfitters the other day, I saw this really cute notebook and they had some journals and stuff but they were pretty expensive and the one that I saw had a really cool feather design in it and I'm like okay I could just make this myself so I drew a sparkly feather down the binding and I attached a um, sparkly like adhesive ribbon and then I just put some glitter glue on there and went cray cray so you can do whatever you want this is the most fun part second to putting on all the crinkles in my opinion And this is how the whole thing looks, you know, not my favorite design. I kind of didn't really know what I was doing when I was drawing with the pen. I didn't really stick to a specific pattern, so I'm sure if I had, it would have looked much more put together. But, you know, I was just messing around, and I think this is, like, a really cool idea. You can make these for your friends. It's so cheap, and they can be so customized, too. I am so glad that my friend showed me this. This is the coolest thing. So in this next DIY, I'm going to show you how you can decorate two different types of mason jars two different ways. Um, you're going to be filling them with a candle or either like an electronic one. So this one's really cool. Stick around for this one. You're going to need some type of jar. I'm just using this empty coconut oil jar and um, you have to rip off the label of course, but that's pretty easy. And then I just bought this one from Michaels. It was really cheap. And then you're going to need some rope or twine. 
You're gonna need some type of strong super glue. I'm using quick hold glue from Michaels. I got a lot of the decorative stuff from the little dollar section bins by the checkout. These crystals were only five dollars. Like what? They're so pretty. And then I got these cute little chalkboard tags. Some pink chalk. These pretty sparkly adhesive strips. Got a handful of these adorable sparkly pine cones. And you'll need a mini candle, and you can get these from the dollar store. And this is going to be going on top of the pine cone, so just make sure that they fit. I got some adhesive trim that has sparkly little gems on it. And this little electric candle, and I'm pretty sure you can get these from the dollar store. I already have this. And as always, you'll need scissors. So after that long list of ingredients, now you may start peeling off the label to your jar. And then please be careful, and if you have any better tools than scissors, go ahead and use them. Um, but I do not, so I had to use these scissors, and you're just going to try to flatten the top of the pine cone. Just like try your best to flatten it. I didn't get mine perfectly flat, but hey, I'm human. And then I used the glue, and I glued on my candle to the top of it. And then I set that aside to dry. And while that was drying, I took one of the chalkboard tags, and I glued it around my empty coconut oil jar. And of course that's not going to stay immediately just by the glue because it says quick dry glue but it actually you know takes a couple of minutes to set in so after I put the glue on and held it in for a little bit I decided to wrap some hair ties around it so that it could hold and dry and I wouldn't have to sit there and hold it you know for 20 minutes then I'm just taking some rope and wrapping it around the top edge of my coconut jar and then I'm just using the glue to glue it on there and you can do it however you want you can make like a little bow or whatever so then I moved over to the other jar and I started filling it up with all the beautiful little crystals from Michaels and I thought these crystal rock things were so pretty they're like so tumblr inspired and perfect for autumn so I threw those in there and then I turned on my little electronic candle flame and I threw that in there. And then I tied some twine around that and made it all pretty dirty dirty. And finally I just decorated the outside of the jar with some adhesive trim. And now back to the other guy. So I took the hair ties off and now it's time to start decorating it. So I just took some more sparkly adhesive trim and wrapped that around and just did whatever I wanted, you know. You know, made it a little bit uneven, but that's okay. That is the beauty of DIY projects. They have a personalized, messy touch to them. And I think that's really, it's really charming. So then um, my pine cone candle is all dry and I added a little gold trim around the two of the you know things meet and then I decided to take some scrapbook paper this parts optional but I cut out a small circle the size of the inside of the bottom of the jar I glued that down in there and then I used that as you know a meeting ground to glue my little pine cone candle guy to the jar and <laughs> it turns out the bottom of my pine cone was not that flat so it didn't really feel like standing up straight so I just threw some more you know little tumbler crystals in there and then I lit the candle and it looks so freaking cute and then I took my chalk and you know wrote a little nice greeting on there really cute these are so cute these are cute for like your shelf um, your bedside table just you know be careful with the flames you don't want to set your room on fire um, and you can put these in on the kitchen table wherever you want they're so pretty you can give them to your friends you can give them to your teacher or you can be greedy like me and keep them all for yourself <laughs> Alright you guys, so this video is already way too long, so those are the only DIYs I could put into this video. But if you want to see how to make the heart-shaped wreath and picture frame memorabilia thing that I showed in the beginning, then make sure you thumbs up this video so that I know that you guys want to see it. And you can comment down below too. Also, in the next video, I'm going to show you guys how to make your own pumpkin spice latte. So make sure to thumbs up this video and let me know that you want to see it and then I'll show it to you guys okay so I hope you guys really enjoyed this video even though it was long um, it was super fun to make I had so much fun coming up with the ideas for this so thank you guys so much and please like this video and stay tuned for the next one bye